I had to do half a roll. As soon as I did, I wanted to see whether I'm in the right direction, so I held it a bit. The straps came out, and I fell out of the aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> Two days before the war started, the squadron, there were two squadrons there. We were moved to, uh, to, to Western Poland in, in the center of the, of the country. And from that direction, the main thrust of German attack came. And it soon, the Mary Hell started soon after. Now, we had the 150 fight, fighter airplanes in action when the war started. And the, and the ratio to German uh, forces was one to nine, roughly. Our airplanes were too old, slow. We could never catch anybody unless we, we, we were flying in opposite directions. The Germans were, had the best aeroplanes in the world at that time, and with terrific armaments, fast. Uh, uh, but we were very maneuverable, so we could over out maneuver, out turn them, and uh, and that was the situation. My first takeoff came to nothing. I, I couldn't find anybody. I couldn't catch anybody. The tactic was very old-fashioned. Two aircraft, a section of two, we were sent to land on a field. The idea was to ambush enemy aircraft should they come. Now, two of us, and if a large formation comes, we didn't stand a, a dog's chance. Anyhow, on the 1st of September, there was a single enemy reconnaissance aircraft just buzzing around and taking photographs. My section leader couldn't take off. He waved me on. I did. I got quite close and close enough to open fire. So I fired and my guns jumped. I couldn't do anything else. So it was possible to reload the, the guns, but I had to undo my, the straps, put my head right in, for, and the aircraft could do what it wanted. <laughs> and I tried very hard to pull uh, on, on a handle to reload the guns. I couldn't. I put the straps back, and the parachute and the straps were the French. And the release, strap release, was very, very, very delicate. You touch it and it will come. However, I put it all together. And I decided that I'm not going away. I must get closer. I got to have a look at this and got some wild ideas what I could do. So I maneuvered myself to attack from behind that particular aircraft. But to do that, I had to do half a roll. As soon as I did, I wanted to see whether I'm in the right direction, so I held it a bit. The straps came out, and I fell out of the aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was so surprised. <laughs> I found myself outside the aircraft. No, I pulled the, the parachute. I descended by parachute. started withdrawing after about a week, over a week. 
We lost few aircraft. We lost some pilots. Uh, there were there were two of my friends from Dublin. They were shot down, killed. We finally found ourselves in the southeastern coast uh, 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 area of, of Poland near the Romanian near Romanian border, and that what was left of of Polish Air Force, and we lost. The Polish Air Force lost out of 150. They, it lost about 114. So it was about 35 aircraft left of of the whole Polish Air Force fighter air, air force. All of us were concentrating there, and with with the view that this will be the last stand for by army and, and will support them. But on the 17th of September, Russians entered Poland from the east. And that was the end. For obvious reason, we had to confine the place and find the the way to continue fighting Germans. I was brought up in the period of between the wars, and we were taught that time and time again during history lessons that Poland is a great thing, and it is the duty of every citizen to care for her, serve her, and if necessary, to defend her. We were told that in France, General Sikorsky was there already. Now, Sikorsky or, organized, agreed uh, with France uh, to rebuild the Polish army and air force in France, and, that, and France agreed to received the Poles who, who could get there. So they, we were told, make your way to France. The France was the only way, an obvious way, to reform and continue fighting. We had to do just that, carry on fighting until the country was free. about 500 of us. Uh, uh, there were ground crews and air crew. France, French did not want to uh, uh, use us in any way at, at first. Uh, they were not interested to convert us to their aeroplane to form uh, units. Uh, 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 but the only thing they did, they formed one squadron, fighter squadron, and one light reconnaissance bomber squad. I arrived at an airfield near Lyon, which was a satellite airfield which where we trained. I, I was already converted to a reasonable uh, French aircraft. And on arrival, on that day, we were told, all group of pilots and ground crews, we were told, to pack up and that will be taken to the railway station and uh, and we are going to be evacuated from uh, Lyon because France signed the armistice with Germany as far as they are concerned, the war is over. The arrangements were already made by General Sikorsky with, with, with uh, Prime Minister Churchill uh, that 
British ships, merchant ships, any ships will call on French ports. And we, we were to get to the nearest port and board the, board the British ship and, and, and get to England. France did not really, their forces did not want to fight. In the First World War, they lost a million and a half men. Nobody wanted another war. It was so soon, merely 20 years since the last war. Well, we were bitterly disappointed that they gave up with, with masses of men under arms. Every one of us believed firmly that Great, that Great Britain will fight, and together we hoped that we shall win, that we must win. <laughs> <laughs>